right, John Versations Podcast, episode seven. I am so happy that you're here. Um, it's been, I mean, before we even start the show, it's been a great night. We've had an awesome dinner, uh, just the getting best. to hang out. You are uh, one of my absolute favorite people in the entire world, and I say that with all of my heart. So uh, very, very happy that you're here, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Christina Bowersox. I want to call you Arcapinko all the time, and so I have to... <laughs> I have to make sure that I'm being conscious to be like, it's Bauer Sox. She's married now. So. Bauer Soxen. <laughs> the Bauer Soxen. Uh, yeah. So uh, Miss Christina, a.k.a. Kita, a.k.a. Crustusha, a.k.a. The Stoosh. Uh, super, 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 super happy to have you here. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me, John. Thanks for coming in. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, I, you know, like I said, I wanted to have you on just because... Um, <clears throat> kind of, you know, if, if anybody listened to the last episode with Emily, uh, Emily Parsley, there are some people in your life that you can just sit and talk to and you don't have to be engaged in doing something. It's, you know, you're just like, oh, let's go see a movie or like, hey, we're going to let's do a game night. But you can mm -hmm. sit down with someone and just talk and and really enjoy people's company. And you are one of those people in my life that that. I'm able to do that with. And I think Thanks, that's, John. oh, it's, it's, thank you. Um, you know, you were, when I first moved down here, you were one of the the first people that I met and you've always had open arms, you know, like treated me like you've known me forever. And I, and, uh, I don't think you necessarily know like how much of an impact you've made on me by doing that. So like, I, I really, I really do appreciate it. Like, uh, I, I consider you family. And so, um, I'm just really, really happy, really, really happy that you're here. And I've got a couple of things I want to talk to you about if you are cool with it. Yeah. Um, you are an artist in your own right. So I want to get <laughs> yeah. to that. That's going to be exciting. In my own right. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, I definitely am a huge fan. And I, I think you know that I've been saying that for a long time. So we'll get to that. Um, but I wanted to kind of start off because, you know, people that are listening, right, they don't know you the way that I do. Um, and typically what I like to do is kind of just talk about, you know, where you came from, how you grew up, things like that. So tell me a little bit about what the, where uh, where the young stooge comes from. Like, what were you like as a kid? <laughs> just weird. Um, well, um I'm a first generation immigrant, I guess. My okay. parents grew up in Ukraine. I was born in Ukraine. I lived there for two years, but grew up in America. So my upbringing is really interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting just seeing how my family, I guess, was in relation to all my friends growing up and everything. Um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting being a foreigner <laughs> growing yeah. up in Smyrna, Tennessee. Well, I mean, I'm sure, you know, because being from Michigan originally, you know, we had one of the largest Middle Eastern populations, mm -hmm. uh, a, a very large Polish population. Um, like, I was very used to kind of growing up with people of all ethnic, a lot of uh, – folks from Mexico, things mm -hmm. like that, which I'm like, you get, you guys made a way North, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like you didn't, I mean, you could, you could have stopped anywhere, but you just kept going to kept the very going. Northern tip. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but you know, a lot of different groups of people, things like that. I can imagine growing up, I mean, with the time that I've spent here, you know, the couple of years mm -hmm. that I've been in, in the Tennessee Nashville area, I can imagine that there may have been, you know, quite the contrast between, you know, your everyday household and then, you know, the kids who you were going to school mm -hmm. with, stuff like that. Um, you know, so you came here when you were two, um, you know, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the way that I want to ask this. Um, so you came here when you were two, but like, talk to me a little bit, like, what were you into? Like, I know, you know, where you <laughs> came from, but like, I want to kind of know, like, you know, what did you do for fun? Like when you were, cause you know, our daughter and you get yeah. to kind of see her. So I, I like, you know, talk to me just a little bit about, you know, what you used to get into. What, what were the things that you did for fun? Oh, well, I was really into church. Um, <laughs> up, All right. which is such a like strange contrast now. Um, but I grew up, I had friends who were really into the Baptist church, and so I was very much into that. Um, I was never not loved in 
like by my parents and everything, but you know, angsty teenager and everything. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be an emo kid, even though I had nothing to be emotional about. Like my parents have never given me anything but love, but I always wanted to, you know, just cry and be sensitive about something. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So between church and just being generally sad, (laughs) I don't know. Um, I'm, I've always been a creative Uh, My grandma was an artist. She was an artist in Ukraine. Um, She was very successful in it. Um, It's kind of, it's interesting to think back on like the dynamic of it because of the Soviet Union, Mm -hmm. everything is very suppressed and limiting and just uh, trying to kind of just hearing about my grandma's stories and everything, she's always been a painter. She was a teacher. This is my dad's mom. She, which I take after her quite a bit in more ways than I wanted. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, it's just interesting, um, kind of hearing about like her story and everything and how it relates to mine as far as like our creativity goes. Um, but I grew up painting and sewing and just, she always helped me create a lot, um, in just different ways. And she kept us outside a lot, um, when we weren't with my parents and now was it like be outside because you should be outside and join or was it like be outside because I don't want you in the house? No, well, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) she's an interesting lady, but she had a nice backyard that was fenced so okay. it was so you like, were safe yeah it wasn't like go play in the woods or anything but we got to play in her little fenced in backyard and she had a pool and oh that's awesome big overgrown trees <clears throat> and so it was just really nice to even just sit in the grass and yeah lay out there yeah i know when uh when i was a kid uh there was four of us i'm the oldest of four so mm. it was there was definitely a lot of days where it was like all of you get outside and <laughs> i don't care where you go just mm-hmm. when the street light comes on you know where you live make sure you're back in the door things like that so well so i was an introverted child for six years an only child for six years until my little sisters came along just ruined it yeah they ruined it <laughs> you know, the, i, I love them more they than are anything. the sweetest people they were sweet from the moment they were born they're just amazing but yeah i was an only child just weird as hell for six years just fending for myself two immigrant parents working factory jobs just day in and day out and i kind of had to you know fend for myself for a little while a little bit of a latchkey kid well, no, because I was scared of everything, so I was like latchkey inside. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I think that's because like a latchkey kid, I, I believe, is basically like you come home and then you're home by yourself for like a portion of the mm-hmm. afternoon because like your parents are working. Because we were like that after my parents got divorced, my mom, you know, did a bunch of there, so we were always home before her, and we had like a few hours before yeah. she got home, and that's when all like the again there was four of us, so there was a lot. Like my uh, my brother would we get into an argument and like he'd hurl a full can of Campbell's soup at me just like unopened, <laughs> you know? Cool. Yeah. So, uh, I could imagine it was probably a lot quieter if it was just you, you know what I mean? Just painting. Yeah. And, sadly quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's funny too, because I don't, I don't think, I don't think of you because I, you know, I've known your sisters for mm-hmm. a long time and they're awesome with the kid. Uh, yeah. I love yeah. it because they just get so excited when she's around, but you know, I've, I've, I've met them, and so I don't. I guess I don't think of that like age difference. So I, in my head, I'm always kind of like, oh, it's, you know, Christina and her sisters. But I yeah. forget that it was just like that stretch of just you. Well, they're so much cooler <laughs> than they really should be, <laughs> and they were always that cool. I my sisters are six years younger than me, and I want to be like them when I get older. They're just so cool. <laughs> I just love them. Yeah, I'm like that um, with my sister, my sister Mary Beth. We are. She's seven years younger than me mm. but she's always the one that I've, i think i've connected with the most mm-hmm. and i don't know if it's just because there's that gap but like i was like man you're really responsible for your age like i need they to take have a always <laughs> been like that too they're so just smart and quick on their feet and just a great sense of style and everything ha- they've ever done was so conscious and it, considerate of everyone around them 
they're just the best. Yeah, they are. They are genuinely like uh, just. I hope they're listening. <laughs> oh, they will. Uh, but they are. They're both very just <laughs> genuinely sweet people. Yeah. Um, and I, I like I said, I love watching them with a the kid because you know they're very different. Um, yeah. But when they both of them just when I've seen them both with a kid, they get very like, kind of like, Oh my God, you're so cute and small. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's as a dad, you're just like, Oh, that's, she's surrounded by people who mm -hmm. like to <clears throat> like to love on her. So that's good. It's hard uh, not to, I know she's love that baby. I know she's a, <laughs> she's a dork, but, um, well, I wanted to ask you, cause I know that you had mentioned, you know, things were a little bit, you notice like differences as a kid between, you know, mm -hmm. how you were growing up and, and people that you went to school with, things like that. Talk to me a little bit about that. Like, what are some things that you noticed or was there anything that as an adult kind of sticks out in your head from when you were that age or? Yeah, I've, uh, as an adult, I've really be become much more secure in my foreignness, which is saying a lot because I've always felt so American and not like a foreigner, except mm -hmm. for whenever I get home, everything's just kind of weird and smells different and everything. But um, I didn't learn English until, I mean, I didn't learn to spell my full name until probably f well into the second grade. Um, but I remember, so the, the way that we came to the United States was we were sponsored by one of the mega churches in Franklin. And... It, the way my dad explains it, which I, I don't want to say anything too out of context, but him and his mom, my, my grandma and my dad, they were um, traveling like to Moscow. So my family's from a small town in Ukraine called Gorlovka, and they had traveled to Moscow um, just on a day trip or something. And there was not like a contest, but like something where you can essentially be granted a citizenship or like an opportunity to it's like a kind of like a raffle or something like almost that, it's, it might the way my dad explains it is that it's like a lottery i mean it's a one in a billion chance that you'll mm. get to leave the iron curtain of the soviet union to go to the pinnacle of society which is the united states yeah and so they were in moscow just traveling around and he said that him and my mom and his mom um had like essentially it was like a not like a raffle but wrote their names down and you'd pick a name out of a hat kind That's of crazy. thing and um he said that it, it they just did it on a just like kind of dicking around oh, you yeah, know i'm sure if there's you know a ton of people he said it, it, the equivalent was you're more likely to go to mars than to go to the united states and so they just put their names down and didn't think anything of it and i think he said that so shortly thereafter, he met my mom, um, and f my understanding of Ukrainian culture is once you date, you get married, you have kids, and that's how it goes. Mm. And so he met my mom shortly thereafter. They got married, uh, you know, had me by accident, and then— Happy accident, though. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Surprise. We'll say surprise. Great not surprise, accident, yeah. Not accident. And— a few months after he got a call saying, or I think I was two or three months old at this point, And my dad said he got a call saying that we were chosen That's and awesome. you have 30 days to decide whether you want to do this or not. And my dad had a pretty, I mean, you can't really have, I, I don't know how it goes. I, I don't know much about mm -hmm. the Soviet Union. I didn't grow up there. I only know just what my parents told me, right. but he said that he and his mom were relatively successful and all of a sudden he got this insane opportunity to uproot his entire life. And he had 30 days to decide whether he was going to do that or not. And he, on a whim, not on a whim, I'm sure throughout much thought, he decided that he wants to do this for our family and him and my grandma ended up moving shortly thereafter. Um, they got the choice of, it was New York, um, Seattle or Tennessee. And my dad <laughs> said that he like looked on a map and Tennessee was closer to New York 
than Washington. And so he thought that that was just the most central point Mm -hmm. between the three. And so he chose Tennessee. And so we were sponsored by um, a large church in Franklin. And my dad and my grandma moved here in 1992, which is when I was born. And they were here for about two and a half years. My mom, uh, my aunt and I tried to get citizenship fairly regularly and we were denied for about two years. So here my parents are freshly married with a brand new baby and my dad moved to the United States, not knowing the language, not having anything. I mean, your degrees, my dad has, he went to college. He went to like a coal mining college, Mm -hmm. which is pretty standard. I wouldn't say standard, but it's something that a lot of Ukrainians do. That's, I guess, a resource that they have there. And um, so he went to coal mining school, though that's not something that can really translate here in yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, the credits don't, yeah. don't convert so very well. he moved here with his mom, left his brand new wife, brand new baby behind, and it was 1992 in the Soviet Union, so they wrote letters to one another. I mean, it sounds like something out of, like, ni- like well, 1922. Yeah, it would sound like a war film or something like that. Yeah. Like my, my dearest wife. Yes. Of, Yes, and they ended up somehow making it two years later. Uh, my mom, my dad's sister, and I were granted citizenship, and we moved to the United States um, to join my dad and his mom. So it was, or my great grandma, my dad's grandma came too. So it was my mom, my dad, me, my grandma, my great grandma, and my aunt. So the six of us, and we lived in like a one bedroom apartment in. Uh, not a great place in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Um, And my parents busted their asses in factory jobs all their lives and were able to provide for us and had my sisters. So we lived in Nashville until I was six. Um, Then we moved to Smyrna, Tennessee, which is probably like 30 minutes away from Nashville, I'd say, without traffic at this point. Um, yeah, and now it'll take you three hours if you yeah. leave at 4.30 in the afternoon. It's yeah, awful. good luck. Yeah, it sucks. So, yeah, and that's how we landed in Smyrna, Tennessee. <laughs> well, I will say, like, <clears throat> when you were when you were kind of talking, talking through it, you know, when you said that your dad was here for two years, and mm-hmm. could, when, when Millie was born, I think it was like the last – like the last week of Kara's uh, maternity leave mm-hmm. and I had to go to a work conference. So I was gone for a week and I felt terrible just in that week. Cause like, she yeah. was still, I mean, she had that brand new baby smell, you know, she wasn't, yeah. nobody was sleeping and anything like that. And, uh, I can't imagine. No. I mean, and a week was really hard. I like, I was like, I'm, will you please FaceTime me because this kid, yeah. like she's known me every day for four months and I'm going to be gone for a week. She's not going to have any idea who I am. And we have FaceTime <laughs> now and phone and I know it's so crazy. Like thinking about like, if I would have had to write a letter, if I would have been like, Kara, I'm writing you from Virginia. How is our daughter? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just, it would have been, yeah. I, I would have liked to see, I mean, I'm very, very happy that you're in my life, but I think it would be awesome if you if your parents, if your dad would have moved to Seattle and like gotten to the grunge movement, Who w- your dad could have been the singer for Pearl Jam, <laughs> <laughs> which I think would have been awesome. Who the fuck would have known where that would have taken us? I know it's, it's crazy just how, yeah, you know, and that's something. I mean, especially like getting older and 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 having kids and things like that. Is you start thinking about like those little moments that like, oh, if I would have done yeah. this differently, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, if I never would have text Kara, you know what I mean? Then because we were living, she was living here, I was mm-hmm. living there. If I never would have sent her that text, I mean, I wouldn't have <clears throat> the life that I have now and all the wonderful people like mm-hmm. you and and you know, there's a, a, a just kind of thinking about. What that all, where would I have been if I didn't do that? You know what I mean? So it seems like so many things just happen just by chance. Because if my dad wasn't in Moscow just dicking around and just happened to see this flyer for this essential lottery to uproot your entire life and move to a, a country that you don't know the language of, 
and just to restart everything with your brand new family. That's gotta be scary. It's terrifying. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't like, I'm a, I, I'm a homebody. I don't like going to the mall if we're, um, yeah. uh, what's that, uh, what's that mall in Nashville? Like the big, you know, it's one of Opry Mills. Yes. The big if, outlet mall. Yes. If everyone's, if anyone's like, let's go to Opry Mills. I'm like, I don't want to, I hate no. tra- the traffic there. gives me a, like a panic attack. I live three minutes in. away and pass by it every single day to and from work. Nothing at all interests me to go there. And we always go if I have family in town. We're like, I guess we can go to Opry Mills because <laughs> then we'll go like we'll go um, like check out like the garden at the hotel and stuff like that's that. That's cool though. And that's I will say you know, that. that's where yeah. we did. I mean, all right, that's absolutely beautiful. But just getting there, I'm just like I hate. That. I I'm, love shopping, but that parking lot will deter you from going anywhere near it. Oh, I hate it. And it's always like you got to bring like a backpack and like hiking boots and like <laughs> rations because there's never a spot that's anywhere close. It's the worst. It's so bad. It's the worst. So I can't imagine being like, well, I'm just here. You know what I mean? Like without even knowing the language. Right. Yeah. Not being able to communicate with anybody, I think yeah. would be, I was, he, your, your, your parents are definitely a lot braver. I think it speaks to kind of the difference in the generations now mm-hmm. too. Like we're, we're soft, and I think the kids who are coming up oh my God. below us are are even softer with the helicopter parenting and things like yeah. that. And so it's just, I mean, I can't imagine. I, there's not a lot of people that I know that I could see being like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna. I sure as hell couldn't uproot no. and do that. What my parents did. I mean, this is my parents, and just I'll, like I look at pictures from their childhood and even my childhood. And it looks like these pictures were taken in the 30s. I mean, just... Just it, some it, guy under... He's like, smile now. Yes. It's <laughs> just crazy. And that's <clears throat> my parents. And it just the differences in... It, it, I don't know. I don't know if it's just culturally or generational or... I mean, it's definitely uh, both. I but at the it, same time... if some of it might be like technology-wise too. Like I'm wondering like what kind of technology we may have had here that just hadn't made it, you know, mm-hmm. but. Oh yeah. I mean, when we went back to Ukraine, I was a sophomore in college. My grandma still had a rotary phone and that's how we would talk. And she had no internet at her house. So whenever we went back, um, I, I was a sophomore in college and I was just dating Hayden, mm-hmm. my husband. And I remember just staying in my aunt's house so I can be near internet and Wi-Fi because my grandma's house was just podunk nowhere. I mean, it was great and it was beautiful for what it was, but it was <coughs> in the middle of nowhere in Ukraine. And I mean, it was, it's just a completely different world. And especially the way completely that we're, we're world. connected now. Mm-hmm. And I can imagine too, being a, like, being a sophomore in college, especially if you're going to university, there's like Wi-Fi and internet everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I can definitely imagine, especially at that age, be like, be like, where the hell is my internet? Like, <laughs> like here. I, I got all these Instagram <laughs> pictures. I can't put them up. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. where I think now, you know, being in, in, I mean, at least for me, you know, coming up on 35, like I would almost kind of be like, oh, this is like if I, you know, I think probably even you like being older, like, hey, if, it might be a good just kind oh, of escape yeah. and turn it off. Like, I remember when we all went to Gatlinburg mm-hmm. and we didn't leave the, you know, there's like the Dolly World and all that stuff that you can do. And we're like, no, nope, I didn't give a shit. Let's stay yeah. in the cabin, hang yeah. out in the hot tub and, and make drinks. I had, oh, mm-hmm. God, it was so much fun. And I saw a bear. So that was cool. I don't think I saw the bear. No, it was, I was outside with Sutton and I saw it just run under. That's just, cool. It wasn't like, you know, full grown. That's like, some giant Tennessee black, shit. Yeah. Did you see the video online? There's a video online of a family who was at Gatlinburg and a black bear, I think it's a black bear. I don't know, but it was a hmm. big ass bear. It climbed. Remember how we had the, um, nope. Nope. like the hot tub was out on that patio yeah. and there was like the big post. This bear climbed up the post and this family looked outside. She was drinking her coffee and looked down. This bear was just climbing up. So she went in and it came right over and just chilling, no. just hanging out. No, like, thank you. I mean, and truly, that may be the way that I die <laughs> is by just trying to touch an random. animal that I don't need to touch. But right now, no, no, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I'm, no, Too close. I'm not. I'm not for it. I saw another one. There was a they were camping and a uh, mountain lion just rolled up and was just stalking around the house looking in the windows uh, all absolutely not and cats are crazy man they got that like yeah. crazy vein in their tooth where they can 
they can like sense where like your veins are. So if it bites you, it can get like right into an artery. Like it can, it's weird. There's, they say that if a, uh, stay in East Tennessee. Well, they say that like house cats though are the same way. They're just not big enough. Mm -hmm. Like if you're, if your house cat was, you know, a hundred pounds and you pissed it off. Or if it's just mean. Yeah. I've seen some mean cats. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like mean cats. I like fat cats. I like I like my buddy uh, yeah. uh, Garrett growing up had a cat that was like 30 pounds mm-hmm. and you could just grab him by the belly and <laughs> spin him on the like linoleum floor and he just, <laughs> it was so much fun. Poor thing. Oh, he loved it though. Honestly, I'd like to reincarnate back into that cat. <laughs> he, he'd get up and he'd just do the like sideways walk and then he gets straight and then he lay down again and you just do it again so that's a dream of mine actually <laughs> yeah just all day just like oh i'm so dizzy i'm <laughs> so dizzy eat. so i did want to ask you because i know that you had mentioned um i know that you mentioned like being a kid you were very into church and religion and stuff like that and yeah. the reason i ask is i i grew up we grew up southern baptist so even living mm-hmm. in michigan my grandparents were from, from kentucky mm-hmm. um when Ford opened, you know, everybody from Kentucky was like, we're leaving, we're going to Michigan. That's where all the jobs are. Mm So, um, that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, they just followed the work. Mm -hmm. Um, but we grew up Southern Baptist and I remember, you know, being in church every Sunday and, and, uh, I was telling you on my dad's side, my uncle and my cousin are both, uh, pastors. One's a youth pastor. One Mm -hmm. just got ordained, things like that. So, was it more of like a family thing or was there like a, like, no. Okay. So you went so solo. Yeah. You yeah. were the El Capitan. So my family being from the Soviet Union, you grow up atheist. Um, but my, so my, my dad's mom, everybody's just kind of undercover Christian essentially. Mm-hmm. And it's orthodox christianity so the i'm not really well versed in the like nuances of how things differentiate in christianity because i'm not really religious at this point but the best way that i can um compare it to is like cath like catholicism Mm -hmm. um very formal yeah but also it's like we would go to church christmas night and easter i mean it was very sporadic it wasn't consistent um it was just like do good and yeah you're fine i guess kind of thing um then i got into middle school and i has always been someone who needed to be liked well okay so we we were sponsored by that baptist church Mm -hmm. and we i mean we would go to church and everything but i just remember growing up and going to Sunday school and no one wanted to be my friend, but I couldn't speak English. So I get it, you right. know, <laughs> but well, kids. now you, I'm sure at that age, it was probably a little, was it? It was the worst. Yeah. It was the worst. I went to, I hated going to church because none of the kids wanted to play with me. No one wanted to talk to me. No one wanted to do anything because I'm the foreign new kid, you know, and I didn't live in the neighborhood. We lived in Antioch and all these other kids lived in the nice neighborhoods in Franklin, which is like the, I mean, for the people that don't know, Franklin is the really nice, fancy, rich people, and we were poor foreigners. Yeah. And I barely spoke any English. My parents definitely didn't speak any English. And I'm like three, four years old, and I just, I like, I have a very vivid, excuse me, imagination from a young age, too. I remember having memories from... Uh, like when we were in that apartment in Antioch, which I was probably around three or four mm-hmm. and I fucking hated going to church because no one wanted to play with me. And I would look forward to when we would get out of Sunday school to go into the big sermon that I could just sit with my parents. And so for a while I really didn't want to have anything to do with church. And then I got into middle school and I, I mean, kids, you know, no offense, but kids are very impressionable. And I remember uh, one of my good friends, my best friend growing up, her family was very, very involved in a Baptist church in town. Um, it was the biggest Baptist church in town. And um, I remember really being so um, attracted to the sense of community and 
belonging and I just wanted to be a part of it so bad because I always felt kind of like an outsider, even though I, it, it's not like I really got like super bullied or mm. I was really disliked or anything like that. I just always personally felt like an outsider because I remember growing up, so I never wanted to tell anyone my middle name. Um, I always told everyone that I was Christina Marie, even though my <laughs> name is Christina Markovna. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Christina Markovna. <laughs> I love it. So I was just so embarrassed and ashamed of not being like everyone else. And church really made me feel, I guess, like a, I don't know, like a, a number in the whatever. I don't know. It just well, like, made, a, like a like a sheep in the flock kind of that's thing. That's exactly right. Yes. Just I'm, I'm I wanted to else. seem so normal and so <laughs> like everyone else and I didn't want to stand out in any way. I wanted to be just like everyone in Smyrna, Tennessee. I just imagine being like, "Hey y'all, I'm Katie Marie." <laughs> Christina Marie. <laughs> Christina Marie. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Christina Marie. Marco, not keep Marco, not keep Uh yeah, it's a, and I can imagine, you know, being that, even if you're not being bullied or even if you're not, you know, I never people felt are accepted, mean, really. It's, yeah. you know, you, you, I think maybe it comes down to like, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you have different, I don't even want to say that you're different, but like, but that you have, a, like, you are born into a different, situation or a different way of living Mm -hmm. you have a different experience and even if people aren't you know like prodding or poking fun at that Mm -hmm. or anything like that like i'm sure it's it's very aware to say like okay i know that that when i go home it's not like yeah when these people go home that's kind of how it was it was just maybe my own sense of awareness that and you know with being in smyrna luckily we i didn't grow up with a lot of really hoity-toity people. It was very middle class to lower middle class kind Mm -hmm. of growing up, which we grew up, I mean, I I, I don't want to say like poor because we never went hungry, but my parents struggled. I mean, when you don't know the language and you don't know, everything just kind of seems like whatever you get handed on your plate, you just take and run with it. Mm -hmm. So I remember my dad talking about how he was a janitor for years because, or he would be a truck driver or help. Like he wouldn't drive trucks, but he would um, go to Florida during any of the hurricanes and help Mm -hmm. with the hurricane relief. And that was his job. And so it was anything that was ever handed to them as far as work wise, which is, I mean, such a blessing a hundred percent you know we're so lucky to be able to have that which i know a lot of people in a lot of different communities don't have that um opportunity but i don't know it was just it, it was really interesting knowing how or recognizing how poor we were i mean we were six people growing up in a one bedroom apartment in antioch and I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but it was just, yeah, I I really recognized how different I was compared to everyone else. Um, And going to church was some way that I thought that I could be like everyone else. Um, And so I, I really leaned into that so hard and I went to the church camps and I went to every opportunity. I went to church every Wednesday night, every Sunday morning, Sunday night. I mean, crying with my arms up in the air, just. I can only imagine. (laughs) God, that was my song. (laughs) And I just remembered just feeling the Lord in everywhere. I don't know. He was everywhere (laughs) at that point. And, um, yeah, I I was very devout Baptist good girl for (laughs) through high school. I mean, it was probably until my junior, senior year that I kind of fell out of that. That's crazy because I guess I didn't, I didn't know that about you like that, that it was like up to your junior because 
you know, I was I was a dare kid, so I'm a little bit older than you. But we hell had yeah. we had a uh, hell yeah, you're older than <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, you fifty. No, older, but I was. I mean, dare was <laughs> like old yeah, man. Dare. Oh yeah, I was all like, <laughs> like I, I've talked about it before, but I was like, oh yeah, you buy. You buy weed from like a dude who's always got a gun in an alley. Like, yeah, only the losers. Yeah, do drugs. And uh, so that like that really stuck with me. And then right b- before I went to high school, my mom was mm-hmm. like, "Listen, all through high school, people are gonna be like, hey, this the sheep thought I was gonna get invited to parties. I was not the kid that got invited to parties. <laughs> I was like, I, feel you. I was in a basement with with like three <laughs> other people every Saturday night. Um." <clears throat> but she's like, your friends are probably going to drink. Your friends are probably, you know, going to s- smoke weed and stuff like that. You know, do what you want to do, mm-hmm. but do it after you graduate. Just get through these four years, mm-hmm. get high school done, and then I don't care what you do. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay. So I just, mm-hmm. I never, and again, I, it's not like I was like, you know, getting invited to parties and people were trying to pour me drinks all the time, but I just managed <laughs> to stay away from it for four years. Yeah. And then I graduated and I was like, game on. <laughs> like, I'm, just, <laughs> like, I'm going crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I mean, I can, like, I can, it's, it's weird to think about that because, you know, I grew up kind of the same way where, you know, it's it whatever we had on the on the table you know was a blessing like mm-hmm. we grew up and got we got the government peanut butter had the the big white jar with the dinosaurs around it and when you got it you had to mix it for like 20 minutes because <laughs> there was like a half inch of oil on top and we get the block cheese that you had to cut and like literally it felt like you had to cut it and then melt it with a blowtorch because mm-hmm. it was just so thick yeah <clears throat> but like i like you you were grateful for it yeah hell yeah you know and i think that kind of instills that I just think there's so many people out there that you grow up without needing. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who've grown up without needing things or, Mm -hmm. or facing those who are still very grounded, like very good people. But there, I think you understand things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. You you don't take things for granted as much. Like Mm -hmm. I've talked about it before, but you know, Kara's asked me like, you know, what, what are your hopes? Like, what are your dreams? What do you want out of life? And I'm like, Kara, Mm -hmm. like, we own our house. Like we own a car. Like I'm not, mm-hmm. all of our bills are paid. Like I'm, I'm smooth sailing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like there's nothing that I'm like, Oh, I need this. Like I really want this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, so I know for me, I got older. Um, Oh wait, real quick before I tell before. So have I told you my grandfather passed away recently? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well. Yeah. We were like, I, it was, it was, uh, I want to say it was like, July of like because we maybe a little bit later uh but it was it was last I mean towards the end of last year but um we had to go down to the uh to Florida for the funeral I remember this yes, yes. yeah and my grandmother uh grew up we grew up Southern Baptist because that's what my dad's side of the family was my mom's mom is a deacon in the Presbyterian mm-hmm. church so they're very you know you you sit down or you stand up you kneel you know, mm-hmm. um, peace be with you and also with you. You do that <laughs> whole thing. Um, and uh, it was time to take communion. Mm-hmm. And so I went up, you know, I went and Kara went. And when you're taking communion, you hold, I, I don't, I'm sure you've done it before, but like mm-hmm. you hold your hand out like this and they give you the little wafer. Yeah. And then you either like eat it or put it in your mouth. And then they come around with uh, the cup mm-hmm. and you can either hold it like this to dip it in the cup or they just let you. Yeah. Drink the communion wine. Yeah. Like the, mm-hmm. the gold, like the uh, Holy Grail, like Indiana Jones cup. Yeah. That box of wine in yeah. that nice cup. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> Yeah, they're coming down the line. It gets to me. Kara's next to me. She's got her little cracker. She eats her cracker. And uh, the the priest comes. He's got the cup of wine. He goes to give it to her. And Kara just goes, no. Uh, and he was like, no. She's like, and he tries to give it to her. And she's like, I don't want any. <laughs> so he's like, oh, okay. And I was like, yeah, you got to go like this. Yeah, she was like. She was like, I don't know what these people have. I was like, he wipes it. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, that's going to, yeah, that's going to kill the whatever funk that it's an older church. So if they've got anything, they've been carrying it for the Greek Orthodox church in Franklin. Well, it's Brentwood technically still does that. So you go up and you line down the, I mean, it's a gorgeous church. It is so beautiful, but everybody like runs down at the end and they have this like, 
reservoir of beautiful bread. Mm -hmm. And then this just gold, large, uh, like, goblet of community wine. (laughs) And it's like just Franzia that they put in there and then put just chunks of blessed bread. And then the priest just gets a spoon and puts the spoon in every... He does... There's no wiping. It's just in, like... Oh, like this. yeah, they've like, got a little, they wipe the rim, but I there's do. There's no wiping. This is the community spoon. This is the Lord's spoon. <laughs> it's the wooden spoon. Everybody takes it. It's a that. metal spoon, so oh. nothing slides off. Oh or it's just from one mouth to the next. Yeah, I couldn't do it. The wipe is, I think, the thing that saves it for <laughs> me. It's just like the, I will say, I always like going to, I always like going to uh, her church when we were going on like Christmas and Easter because they had like the big bell choirs. Mm-hmm. So it's just a bunch of like. 56 year old women who were just <laughs> bing, bing, and like getting down like they were good i'm like i don't know how you develop Churches that are nuts. oh it's so insane and i will say like i i think the thing too is that you know my my whole thing is that i'm not going to say that i'm like an atheist right because mm-hmm. by the time i can give anybody an answer or i know yeah i'm not going to be able to tell anyone you know what i mean it's Same. just it's going to happen Same. Um, But I do really think that, like, especially kind of talking about, like, your situation growing up, right? Like, it's – it's church is a really good thing for that sense of community, for that, like, sense of belonging. and Shame. I think it depends on the (laughs) – A healthy sense of shame is always good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it – I think it – you know, if you're a Catholic, I think you get that way more than you do if you're, like, you know, Southern Baptist. But I think, you know, there's some people out there that just – like uh, I've talked about this before, but I, my uncle got into a really bad, uh, got into a really bad accident, and he was really into drugs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And he got in that accident and was like, oh, "I'm all about Jesus now." And so it was yeah. like just changed his whole life. So it you know, gives you that thing to kind of put in place of, which mm-hmm. I guess you know if you're going to be. I mean, if it works for somebody, that's amazing. Yeah, and if you're going to be addicted to something, you know, why not yeah. be addicted to you know. The community Lord. and right yeah <laughs> i'm addicted to the lord <laughs> if you scared go to church Woo! um so what was it that because i know for me like i i went so far as like i was uh, a youth pastor for well not like a youth pastor i was like a youth leader <laughs> you'd make a good youth leader. i would i would i'd be a great yeah well, you play the that. guitar yep. that's perfect be like all right guys we're doing the bowling alley the uh, rock and bowl lock-in <laughs> Playing ludicrous at ten thirty. Don't tell your parents. <laughs> um, It'll all be censored, though. Right? Yeah, I got the clean version on Spotify. <laughs> um, but I know for me, so like I, I was you know wanted I was like a youth leader for a little bit, um, mm-hmm. and I mean I was again I was older, and I you know, remember hearing uh, there were some people talking that were like yeah you know we think. Uh, you know, Billy might have a little limp in his wrist. I think we might want to put him into like hockey, kind of man him up a Ooh, little bit. Yeah. And I remember there was a girl that was asked not to come to the uh, to the youth group because she, you know, she it, the rumor was that she had become or that she had come out as like a lesbian at like mm. you know sixteen, mm-hmm. seventeen, or however old she was. So that, like they were like, yeah, we don't think we want her to come. And oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, for me, I was like, mm, like if this is. This this does not seem to be what should be going on. Like, yeah. I think we've read the same a lot of the same things from the same book. I don't think it's our mm-hmm. job to be like you can't come here, right? You know, like we need to change who you are as as a person. You know what I mean? Right. So it, right. That I I that for me was when I was kind of like, I don't think that yeah. like you know I'm in the right place. Was there anything for you? that kind of shifted or was it just like, you know, kind of like Santa Claus, like you just outgrew it or? Absolutely. Oh yeah. My parents, I mean, just like any other marriage goes through ebbs and flows. And my parents had, I mean, when you get married, my mom was 17 and my dad, I think was 22 or 23 when they got together. And the, the way that they've explained to me the culture in the Ukraine, it's like you date and you get married. And there's not this, you date for a few years or you date for a year. It's like you date for a few months and then you get married and you have kids right away. And my parents got married essentially in that same way. My mom was 17. Dad was in his early 20s. 
Uh, then you get uprooted to a completely different country, to completely different circumstances, and your life is 100% different. Being separate for two years. Yeah, and, yeah you just crazy. go through some crazy shit. And they had me, and then all of a sudden my parents were pregnant with twins, my twin sisters. And it's not like we were wealthy growing up. So you have a kid, and then you get surprised with two more kids at once. I just can't imagine the kind of, I mean, what kind of stress that is. I, I don't have kids right now. I, I just cannot imagine how crazy that shit is. So my parents definitely went through a real rough patch for several years. And me being the oldest, well, luckily I was, looking back now, I'm very, very thankful that my parents were always so transparent and so open with me about everything as far as their hardships, as far as everything good in life. I mean, they didn't go into too much detail that I didn't really need to know, but they never hid anything from me. And so when they weren't doing well, I knew about it too. Mm -hmm. And my parents were on the verge of a divorce. And I mean, like they, they were essentially separated and, you know, here and there off and on for like five to seven years from what I remember. And it was not great for a long time. And luckily my sisters and I, which, which we've talked about it since then, but like they were very sheltered from it. So they weren't aware of anything until they got older, but I was at the age where I was very aware mm -hmm. and present for all of it. And essentially like, was with both sides of my parents through all of it. Um, I just remember, maybe it was just that emo side of me, like, I'm a teenager and it's all my fault. And, but just, I internalized so much of it. And, you know, I was like, is, is some of this my fault? Or can I not, because I am so close with both of my parents is, is it my fault that I can't mediate this more mm -hmm. or in some way help? I should be able to fix it. Yeah. And is it my fault that it's not working, you know, because it's like they're married and I'm just this next kind of like, I don't know, just this extra part in this. Um, and so it was nasty for a long time. And I uh, really like the church really provided a bit of an escape for me. But then I remember in parts where I was like, I didn't just like put my hands up to God. It would still just get so bad. And I remember thinking like, I'm praying so hard and I'm going to church all the time. And all I think about is God and Jesus and how I can commit myself to the church and how I can do everything for this. And like, I, I'll go on mission trips, I'll do this. And I, I would just pray. I would just like stay in bed and cry and cry and just pray to God to just keep my parents together and just to like make them happy. And, or even if they wouldn't stay together, just make them happy. And I remember just begging God to give me a sign and it'd be like, just any kind of sign. And then I'd wait and wait and everything. I'm like, just still waiting on a sign, God, just yeah, something still waiting. And girl. you know, months would go by and I just, wouldn't really see a sign and there wouldn't be any change and my parents would get worse or, you know, kind of ebb and flow and still never get really great. And I just remember thinking like, God, please, like if you're here, please just give me a sign, please God, please God. And then months would go by and then like there would be like just no change. Everything would just be exactly the same, just consistently shitty. And like I, I remember... It was probably my senior year, and I would just stay up and cry and be like, God, I believe in you, but do you believe in me? Mm -hmm. Like, and It's a two-way relationship. Yeah, like, uh, I, I've been going to church, but I don't think you've been noticing. Right. And just begging for some kind of change, and nothing ever really changed, and I never felt like I got the sign, or I was like, well, fuck. Like, and then... I I swam in high school. I wasn't any good at it, but it was it's something that occupied all of my time and everything. And I remember finally getting out of it and having time and you know with my parents 
you know, all, all their shit. And I just remember thinking like, I've been preoccupied with this and there've been no change. And I just begged and pleaded and nothing ever happened. Nothing ever was different. And I was like, God, if you're there, just give me a sign and nothing would happen. And then months would go by and it's the same shit. And I was like, kind of coming to terms with like, well, what if God isn't listening to me in particular? Mm -hmm. And then I went through the, well, why am I any more special than anybody else? Right. And it's like, well, there's so much more suffering going on than just my little fucking problems. Yeah. And God just doesn't seem to be sending any signs. There's like a, there's like a priorities list. Uh, yeah. And you start to think maybe I'm not. Yeah. And I just, I mean, sorry to jump to such like a weird graphic topic, no. but it's like, I remember as a kid, like masturbating and thinking, God's watching and he's, and I would just like cry after I would masturbate and think like, I'm going to be punished for this. And then like waiting and it's like, nothing ever really happened. Right. And then being older and it's like, I'd masturbate and then cry and like plead for forgiveness and everything. And then just knowing that something was going to happen, nothing ever happened. And so then I was like, there's this correlation between like, I'm crying and begging for things to get better and things aren't getting better. But then also I'm masturbating and things aren't really getting any worse either. So mm -hmm. it's like, maybe God's not really <laughs> giving a shit about me in particular. Right. And then I just started feeling like, I don't think there's anything really there and it's okay. Like I, it's not, I didn't feel like let down by it. I mean, I, I really, um, I had a hard time with it for about a year and then I got into college and I just, I feel like once I went to UT Knoxville and was able to kind of be myself, I really found so much solace and being so small and not mattering so much. Like yeah. I feel like this whole sense of like, I'm a Christian and I have this purpose and I am someone in this world and I have this path and I am meant for this specific task. And I just felt so much relief from not having to be this, like I'm meant for this specific thing right here. And I can kind of make my own choices and create my own path and not have the sense of responsibility and weight as like, well, I don't feel like this is what God told me to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's kind of how I lost yeah, my religion. It's well, and it's, it's, it's crazy to think about because I think, you know, that was a big thing for me was, you know, like, okay, if there's a God and everything happens for a reason, mm -hmm. why are, why are places like St. Jude's even a thing? Like, yeah. is there a reason that, you know, three year old kid would get like leukemia or yeah, you know, like what, like what reason is like to teach the parents like strength and, and perseverance. Cause yeah, that's like, that. that's a fucked up lesson. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? <clears throat> and now where I get a little bit torn sometimes is on the other hand, right? Like, your parents are together and happy and yeah, they you know made it I mean? through, <laughs> you know? So like, was that, you know, just playing kind of, uh, devil's advocate, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. was it that like, the sign just got passed along a little yeah, or further. like, or, you know, the whole, the whole kind of thought is like, yeah, like you've got to suffer this so that you become stronger on the backside. Cause I guess depending on what you, what you believe mm -hmm. or how your faith, like points you or whatever, you could look at it and say like, yeah, I guess he was listening and I had to, you know, persevere through this and, and deal with these things. And now I'm stronger and they're mm -hmm. stronger and things like that. But it's just one, like, I think the, the thing for me is that again, you know, you just never know. And so I think it's important to try to, uh, try to, at least for me, I try to, to live as if, it was real. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because essentially all it's telling you to do is be a good person. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> be nice to help people, like love people, accept people, mm -hmm. things, you know, like just be the best person that you can be. And I don't think there's a wrong message in that, but I think that, yeah. you know, especially the shame part, you know what I'm saying? Like, just like, I, I remember being mm -hmm. a little kid and just being like, you know, I do something and be like, Oh man, I had just, I have to pray. I'm in such trouble. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, so it's, I mean, I think that that shame component is I can't masturbate unless I'm crying. I have the opposite problem, <laughs> but, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. But, um, 
I guess it's terrible. I don't know. <laughs> but see, I I absolutely I am not against religion or Christianity. I I don't want to put it down in any way. Um, it is it has been so beneficial and so integral for so many people and it has been such a sense of strength and I mean resilience and everything else and I'm so for that and if it works for someone I'm in full support of it it's just not something that really yeah resonated with me for well, and I mean I because my, my life my whole thing is I could be wrong uh, I yeah, could I'm, I could be wrong I'm willing to be proven wrong yeah, yeah. I mean I could be wrong and you know, like, uh, you know, God could very well exist. And, you know, like, and I'm also not someone who thinks that, you know, when you when you think about like the way that you've grown up, I mean, just talking about like what we've been talking about now, like think about how much you change your views, you change mm -hmm. your, you know, absolutely. A year from now, something may happen to me where my perspective is completely changed. And I, I yeah. feel completely different. But you know, it's like, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I don't, I don't want anybody to, I don't ever like making anyone feel ignorant or less than, or, right. you know what I mean? Cause there's, you get, you get people who, you know, correlated to like Santa Claus or the East, like, so this made up No, and it's not that not. for, yeah. for people, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this because like I didn't realize that you and I kind of had that mm -hmm. similar similar path. Um, I think that's uh, I don't know. It's very interesting. It's I I found it maybe more since I'm in Nashville and it's a little bit more of a liberal town kind mm -hmm. of as as it's come along in the past ten years or so and maybe more in in my social group, but it's. It's been something that I'm not open with um, in a lot of places, too, mm -hmm. because it's just I don't know. I I don't know. I have I have nothing against Christianity or religion in any aspect. If it helps you, I am in full support. Um, it's just it's not been for me. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I think the thing, too, that I've been kind of thinking about is you know, with having a kid, mm -hmm. like at some point they're going to, that they're going to be faced with that, you know, Hey, like she's going to ask me what is church or what is, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then like, how do kind of thinking about like, how am I going to answer that? You know what I mean? See, like my parents were all, always so, um, I was so lucky to have parents who were so open and let me be just a human being because my parents didn't grow up well I mean we were Baptist coming to the states but they weren't Baptist like we just went to a Baptist church right they didn't we didn't grow up going to church we didn't grow up you know my parents didn't force me to get up every Sunday morning to do anything um, and they didn't force me in either direction they let me excuse me <coughs> just kind of find the path that I wanted and I had religious friends in middle school and early high school and they let me do that and they let me find myself in that way and they also which I wasn't very public with them whenever I stopped believing I mean I'm sure they kind of got a, a sense whenever I didn't go to church all the time right. um, and they never pressed me on it in either way maybe more towards like here in the last few years of as my parents have gotten older, they've been asking like, well, do you pray and everything? I'm like, no, you know, I, I appreciate that you do, but it's just not something that I do. Um, but then again, a few Christmases ago, I got really drunk and told my parents like, yeah, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God. <laughs> and that was probably not the best time to do it, but, um, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. And my parents have been open with me. So I feel like I owe it to them to tell them how I feel. And, you know, it's kind of an open debate. And if we talk about it, that's, I'm totally fine with the discussion that we have. Um, yeah. And we just have that open kind of dialogue between well, all of us. That's important though. Right? Cause like, it's not like you're trying to change anyone's mind. And that's my yeah. whole thing is I'm not trying to, 
I'm not trying to 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 convert you away. I'm not trying. You know, mm-hmm. I, I would never. You know, I would never again like make fun or anything like that. And and you know, I've you know, Kara's family, Kara's mom, mm-hmm. and she's you know, we've had that conversation before because she knows how I feel, and she is you know very much the the opposite way. Mm-hmm. But it's never you know, it's never like you know, well, you're ridiculous for thinking, you know what I mean? And I, I think that is if just because we, d- people don't agree on things mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you can't have the conversations and, and, right. and at least know where each other is coming from, you know, mm-hmm. where each other's, even if I don't agree with your viewpoint, at least I kind of understand mm-hmm. you a little bit, a little bit better. You We're know? so lucky to have families <laughs> like that, that don't, like, I, I mean, I can speak for myself that I, I am just so blessed and lucky that I don't have hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> <laughs> that I, I have such a like no matter what I have going on in life and in all walks of my f- journey my parents have always been so accepting um and that's another thing that sorry going back to your Christian uh like kind of disintegration is I had gay friends growing up mm-hmm. and I don't I th- I don't know if maybe I've had a sense that I was probably a gay man in my past life, (laughs) but I've just like growing up, I had gay friends um, and my parents never like said anything. I was always like able to hang out with them and my parents never like made me feel weird about it. And I remember talking to them and this was when I was in the church too. um, And I never understood why like, church people didn't like gay people because it was like, what a delight. Like, gay people are great. You know, gay guys are... Gay. Well, yeah, what about it? The only message I'm sending is gay equals good. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Gay good. That's all that I knew. And I remember thinking, like, why are people so, like, uptight about this? I don't mm-hmm. get it. All my friends are great. And I remember one time, I have a very vivid memory of my mom picking me up from swim practice, and I was just... I don't remember if I had a friend who confided in me um, about like their hardship being gay and feeling rejected. But I remember having a conversation with my mom, a very honest conversation, driving back from swim practice. And we were like silent. And I asked my mom, I was like, would you still love me if I was gay? And I remember my like my mom just got so pissed. And she was like, why do you think I don't love you? Like, <laughs> like, essentially, like, are you fucking kidding me? Too. Like, why would I not love you? Yeah. Is there, like, what is your problem? Why would you ever think I wouldn't love you? I don't give a shit who you are, what you like. I will always love yeah, you. You're my and kid. I remember thinking, like, what a, how lucky am I to have a parent like this? But that's the thing that drives me crazy, especially about people with that bigotry who, who claim that that religion christianity Mm -hmm. because you're supposed to love people exactly like that your mom Mm -hmm. is your parent you know what i mean like you know you can even if you do consider it like a sin or whatever you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like at the end of the day you're loved in spite of those sins we're supposed to sin because you're you're made the way that we're made is designed for us to sin and then be able to you know in theory to sin and then you know, atone for those sins Mm -hmm. where I feel like you've got people who a large group who, who pick and choose what's convenient Mm -hmm. to their bigoted points. Right. Yeah. That's a lot of where we live, you know, like, yeah, yeah, but it feels like even, you know, and, and, and I definitely understand, you know, with the show, um, I've been on Twitter way more, you know, Mm -hmm. cause you know, out there just trying to let people know that it's out there and stuff like that. And, um, you know, you see all the trending stuff and, uh, and just like going through it and maybe it's just because it's in a vacuum and it seems right so right. much bigger, but it's just like, just like just hit after hit after hit of just, mm-hmm. you know, ridiculous. I mean, especially with all the, all the, the political climate right now and the elections coming up, it's, it's just amplified mm-hmm. by a million, but it's, it just seems that that's been, I think my primary point with it is that you cherry pick, you cherry pick and say, yeah, you know, a man is not supposed to lay down with another man or a woman's not, but you leave out the part where it's not, 
it's not our place to judge. If you believe in that, yeah. there's only one person who's going to judge. You're supposed to accept, to mm. love, to, you know, and it, 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 it gets irritating to be like, well, you're just, you're using it as a prop. That's all yeah. it is. It's just, I don't like this or I'm uncomfortable with this or, you know, maybe I'm a little closeted and, and so it's easier for me to be, you know, mm -hmm. I hate the gays, you know what I mean? Instead of the acknowledge most, in, feelings. In my opinion, the most closeted people are always the gayest. Um, well, you know, I don't know if you remember, but there was that politician <laughs> guy who like he passed a bunch of, uh, he punched. He passed a bunch of uh, like anti-homosexual legislation and stuff, and then he got caught doing the old foot tap in the hell yeah, bathroom. yeah. This is he like, loves dude. sucking dicks. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. the uh, there was a guy who run the who ran the gay conversion center, and he got you know turned out that he was getting stuff like a Christmas yeah. turkey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. You know, and it's like it's and that takes the <clears throat> credibility away from good wholesome Christian people. Cause I know so many just amazing Christian people, which it's always the, like the shit, the loudest person or the worst person always ruins it for everybody. But it's like, I don't by any means like, I don't condone Christianity. Cause I have uh, most of my friends are Christians yeah. uh, in one way or another, Catholics or Christians or just religious people in some way. And they're the best people ever. It's just those one, just, just the loudest dumbasses that really hate themselves and ruin it for everybody yeah, else. I can't, it, it, it just bothers the, the hell out of me. Cause it's like, you're, you're, you're forgetting the important parts and you're focusing. Yeah. It's just, you know, let he without sin cast the first stone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, those people have uh, just a shitload of problems yeah. and why, why focus on yourself when you can focus on other people's problems? Yeah. Like the Westboro Baptist church. I'm sure that that's what, <laughs> that's what God wanted you to be doing. Hell yeah. Rolling up at soldiers funerals. Yeah. That's exactly ridiculous. what he wanted. But yeah, that's one of the, it just gets under my skin. I, I'm just like, and you know, I, like I'm, uh, I'm planning on having, I, I was telling you, my, my cousin is a youth pastor and he actually lives here in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So I was actually planning on having him on cause we have, that would be really yeah, interesting. We have very different opinions, but mm -hmm. we, we, we've, you know, just being family, like we've had talks before he's been here and we've just sat on the, the back porch and, you know, we, mm -hmm. we, li we can hear each other without like shutting down. And, and mm -hmm. I think it would be interesting to have him on and kind of see the other side of that coin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause I like, you know, I don't ever want the, the, either myself or, you know, the platform to be something like, mm -hmm. you know, we're just not against it. It's, you know, about the stuff. That's why I'm really glad that you came on because this is exactly the kind of conversation and exactly the reason that I wanted to do something like this. Mm -hmm. Um, is just to hear, you know, from different people, different perspectives and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, I did want to ask you this. So, you, um, I know that you had mentioned kind of earlier in the, in the, uh, in the conversation that, you know, you now feel way more comfortable with your foreignness, Hell yeah. which is, <laughs> that's, that's a track suit. That I'm yeah, bitch. Uh, yeah. Adidas. How do you say Adidas? Adidas. Adidas. Right. Yeah. That you're the only person I've ever heard say it like that. That's how all, all the real foreigners say it. Well, it's funny though, because in, Maybe it's just because, you know, I don't like I, I haven't like known you since we were kids or anything like that. But, you know, I've never thought of you as I've never looked at and been like, oh, Christina, the foreigner. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just like, I, you know what That's I mean? because you're a good person. <laughs> well, but I mean, there are some pe there's, you know, there's some people that you meet that you're like, OK, you haven't been here very mm -hmm. long. And you know what I mean? Like, well, I've grown up here. Right. I, I am very I identify way more. I mean, I'm I'm an American. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an American citizen. I grew up in this culture. Technically, Russian was my first language, but really, I mean, my strongest language is English. And I have I've noticed that when I don't speak Russian as often, I really have a hard time speaking uh well in it because mm -hmm. I the only people that I have that I speak Russian with are my parents right I really I mean I have a few Russian friends but we speak English or right. we don't 
speak that much anymore, you know? And now, do you find that you can, like, if someone's speaking it to you, you can understand it? 100%. It's just the... I can understand, a, I mean, I don't read in Russian, so a lot of, like, the nuances and everything are really hard for me to understand. But based on context clues, I can, I can watch a movie and understand, depending on what the movie is. Um, but I can... I understand way better than I can speak it. And it's just because if you don't use it, you lose it. And that is so true. That's going to be the kid. It's so true. Because when your mom, when she hangs out with a kid, she'll mm -hmm. tell her in Russian to go get her socks and she'll just <laughs> run over and get them. And I'm like, you're going to have a Russian baby. Oh, she's going to talk so much shit about me and so yeah. much shit about Karen. I'm not going to have any idea. So cute. I'm not I'm like, I don't know what you said, but I'm she'll, sure it wasn't nice. She'll understand it. I can guarantee, like, as, like, she'll get older and she'll be able to understand it. She won't be able to speak it, but she will 100% understand quite a bit of it. Dude, I can have her translate. Especially if my mom, which I don't know if anybody knows, my mom watches your baby. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be <laughs> just oh, yeah. and that's the, plan. the perfect level of yeah. weird, in my oh, opinion. Oh, I can't. I hope she's a little, <laughs> hope she's painting and. <laughs> Eating weird, like, fried liver oh, and. Yeah. Uh, your, your mom has sent some stuff over here and uh uh oh man what was it maybe it, i don't think it was liver um maybe it was liver i don't know oh Jesus. we eat weird shit i it, love weird shit but it was delicious i was like oh my god mm -hmm. so i would never you know i'm your very baby's gonna love like pickled herring and marinated tomatoes and borscht beets everything um Hell yeah. <laughs> Bears beats Metal yeah, Sarge, right. Alaska. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, good for her. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'll probably stick with my cheeseburgers and, and pizza. I'm very. You'll learn to love yeah. it. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Karen and I have been together, what? Uh, I think this year will be eight years, maybe? Uh, seven mm -hmm. years? Seven years, I think. And I'm still, she's still working on it. Well, that's how uh, I was forced into loving things because my parents had threatened me to, you know, it's like, if you don't eat this, then you have just bread and water. So good fucking luck. Yeah. If you don't want to eat, then you're not going to eat. So. Yeah. My, uh, so I, you know, I told you my grandparents were from Kentucky on my dad's side. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom, my mom's adopted. So. You know, she's been my, my grandparents on her side. They've been my grandparents my whole life. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're always be, you know, grandma and grandpa. But, um, you know, when you it kind of got me thinking about that a little bit when you were talking about, you know, you know, the things that you're interested in. You got the interest from like the painting and the creativity from mm -hmm. your grandma. It's like that's I think one of those things where it's kind of like, oh, man, it would, you know. I wonder, because, yeah, I like playing music. My mom played guitar and stuff like that. Really? But, like, who else did those things? Mm -hmm. um, but when you were talking about the bread and water, <laughs> uh, I remember, so my grandparents, we grew up in Madison Heights, which is, mm -hmm. we grew up on John R. and 8 Mile, which is uh, about, well, I don't want to say we didn't grow up there. I lived there until I was probably, I want to say third grade, and then my entire dad's side of the family still lived there. So even though we moved mm -hmm. out into the suburbs, they, you know, we went there all the time because that's where Eight that mile, whole, like, it, like 15 minutes away, maybe mm -hmm. like John R and eight mile is, is probably about like 10 minutes from downtown Detroit. Mm -hmm. So, um, my grandma grew up in, in Kentucky and they grew up very poor. Like mm -hmm. she married my grandfather when he was like, when she was like 14 or 13 or cool. something like that. And super cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but you know, they, they grew up with like nothing. So we were over there and uh, we're like, you know, gr they're granny and pa. Cause they're mm -hmm. from Kentucky. They're like, granny, we're, we're, we're hungry. And she was like, I'll make you sandwiches. We're like, Oh, so fucking sweet. Oh, so nice. And so she, I don't, um, they're called uh, poor boys or po' boys. The way that I've had them here. <coughs> oh <my> <coughs> I've never put that connection together. Yeah. The, Shit, the way okay. that I've had them here is like, you know, you can get like a shrimp po' boy yeah. or something like that. The way that they had them, it was just bread, ketchup, mayonnaise, uh, tomato, and lettuce. And so she's like, I made you guys a sandwich. And I was like, you're missing a crucial ingredient in the sandwich. This is, this is the sandwich. This is like bread and then some stuff that goes on a sandwich, but it's not yeah. a sandwich. And I, I mean, we were, I must've been maybe like nine or 10. And I was like, I'm not eating this shit. <laughs> and she was like, well, then you're not hungry. 
and yeah. took it. We didn't eat anything for the whole day. That's so funny that you say that because we grew up with our poor ass eating cowboy sandwiches, which is just white bread, mayonnaise, and a tomato. And that's like, that's what you got. Yeah. And now if you offer me that, that sounds amazing. A good mayonnaise, like a good mayonnaise, a tomato, and a white bread, salt and pepper. Hell yeah! I, I would just have the day. white bread. I'm not a mayonnaise. I mean, I don't <laughs> mind mayonnaise. I'm not a tomato guy, and I I can't imagine just doing like oh, white I bread and mayonnaise. It. I love it. Like if I do a BLT, it's just like the the bacon, the and the lettuce, and then just oh, that's I want to give. I want it all. Yeah, I'm I'm not. Yeah, I'm not fancy. I'm interested in hearing what you like. All your like poor foods were. Growing oh, up, because we man. had some weird shit growing so up. So we did you ever? So I guess here, I guess a lot of places is called shit on a shingle, but we always called it gravy train. <laughs> no. And it was mashed potatoes, and mm-hmm. then you would get um, like ground beef, mm-hmm. and you would like saute up the ground beef, and then you would use brown gravy, and you just mm-hmm. dumped the meat and the gravy on the potatoes, and then we would always have it with peas. That sounds so good, dude. That to this so day, good. Karen won't make it for me. She won't. She won't. She like refuses to. But um, the like the best way to eat it is you mix everything. So you take that the sounds peas, great. And it's just like a, the best way I can think to describe it. It's like a beef version of like the famous bowl from KFC before <laughs> yeah. it came out. But I guess in the military, they would eat that a lot. They that's. I guess where the shit on the shingle comes from because they mm-hmm. would use a piece of bread. So they would scoop it up oh. and then put it on bread, which. Uh, we, we honestly, I'd eat that. We had a lot of. I love my mom, and I know that she listens to the show, so I, I don't want to like throw her under the bus or anything like that. But um, <laughs> I, I don't have memories of her being the strongest cook. We look, times are tough, and dude, when you've got four fucking kids, oh yeah, we had last a lot thing you want to do and is she was cook. a single parent. I mean, my parents got divorced when when I was. 14 or 15 oh, that's tough and so i was 15 my sister was 14 mm-hmm. my brother was 13 and then uh, mary beth was eight so i mean mm-hmm. and like we were allowed to go like see my dad and stuff but i mean j- just at that it was kind of raw at that time we just didn't really so mm-hmm. it was just her and us so we had a lot of cereal and scrambled yeah. eggs my mom it was either it was chicken Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's two things my mom makes that I will forever love. Uh, one is it's called, I don't know if this is culturally appropriate, but this is what it was always called. It's called Mexican chicken. And it was, it's just like rice, taco seasoning, corn, and then chicken. And it's just like cook Mm -hmm. it in a, in a skillet and you can do like nachos with it or, um, that sounds great. Eat it with tortilla chips or put it on like a taco shell or something. We actually had it, uh, Mm -hmm. we made it in Gatlinburg when we all went. That was one of the things we did for dinner one night. We made burritos out of it. Oh, yeah. That yeah, was that's so really good. good. That was and so then good. she made no-bake cookies. And I think she was really good at no-bakes because yeah, you so didn't good. have to bake them. Because she was – I don't remember her being the best baker. All of the sun's great. Oh, yeah. Um, we had then, canned peas and mayonnaise with oh, yeah. sardines. We always had canned peas. Uh, Mixed with mayo? No. You know what the upgrade is now, though? It's the Hispanic mayonnaise. So it's the mayonesa with the lime. Mm. With the kids, fancy peas. girl. <laughs> I know we've upgraded. A I little get bit. the only time I eat mayo is at Burger King or Five Guys. I I'm like, put that, mayonnaise. put that on my burger, and I'm good. <laughs> uh, I used to have a, a phobia of mayonnaise. <coughs> well, it just by itself just makes me want to vomit. But on any on anything, yeah, it's great. That's the true Russian condiment. Well, no, sour cream, but then mayonnaise is like just. It's I'm like not this. sour cream guy either. I found out it was in like a lot of like like baked goods, and I was like, I can't really. I was like, that kind of ruins it for me. I'll put sour cream on everything. Oh no, I can't. Yeah, wh- for some reason, when That's I was the in, true Caucasian condiment, it tastes like nothing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't do it. I think Kara likes it. She likes the French onion dip and the uh, the sour cream. I'm just, it's not. I can't do it. There's so little things that I won't eat. I'm the complete opposite. We just, it's like when you're, I mean, it's better than going hungry. So you just eat what you got. Oh yeah. I mean, I'll eat anything. Yeah. I mean, if it, if it comes, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that if it's like, if I'm going to starve, I'm going to be snooty, <laughs> but I'm not starving around here, but you know, if, 
somebody's making something for dinner that I'm not interested in, I can buy a two dollar box of pizza rolls. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a two dollar box of pizza rolls. I'm not, you know, I've earned. I think I've earned that coming from. I, I can spend the two dollars and not feel bad about myself. But I'm the bitch that will lit- like if I have a good food experience. So. Um, my husband Hayden took me to this nice ass restaurant in Nashville called Bastion uh, it's a last week. Five week it, RSVP or it, uh, reservation list. Yeah, we had to make the reservation. Um, it was four or five weeks in advance, and it's a five course meal. And I cried there twice. It was so <laughs> fucking good. I mean, it's a religious experience to me to have a good meal like that. And I just appreciate food is my. Obviously, my love language, and I just, I will. If something is so good, I'll cry, which I'll cry in most just things if I have like a strong enough emotional response to it. But man, food, yeah. I see. I am like that, but I get like that with really, (laughs) like basic food. (laughs) Like if I have really good pizza, like I'm, I'm one of those guys that like. There's a pizza shop in New York, and every day the dude makes one, just one big dough ball. And then oh, wow. <clears throat> when that dough ball is, is gone, it's gone. Yeah, I'd cry over so, that, too. So, like, I, I want to eat at that shop, mm-hmm. right? Like, uh, like there's Buddy's Pizza, which is very similar to Emmy Squared, where we went. But it's <sighs> so Emmy bad. Square is like Buddy's Pizza. But if it's, like, really high end, we just want to charge way more. Like yeah. Buddy's, like it's very good, mm-hmm. and I would I go there any day of the week. But Buddy's Pizza is like the actual Detroit. Mm-hmm. That's where that came from. And that's, that's interesting. That's one of those things. Like if you sit down, if you go up there and you like get that, it's like, oh my, or a good burger. Like mm-hmm. a, oh my god, like a good burger. That oh, to hell me, yeah. but I just I have such a hard time getting out of my we went to uh, yeah i took care out on a date night and uh, they were like mm-hmm. um yeah so we were ordering dessert and i was like they were like uh, so we've got the the uh chocolate lava cake it's gluten-free it's uh, made with this that <laughs> and i was like excuse me can i pay extra to have gluten put into it yeah, because in <laughs> yeah i want i want mm-hmm. that basic stuff <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah i just like now i will say I try very, very hard to if somebody makes something and I'm not sure that I'm going to like like I catch a lot of shit because I'm not a pasta guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't care. We had a lot of spaghetti growing up. And so Mm -hmm. I just I don't think I care about it. Same with like mac and cheese. I just don't care. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I go somewhere and like somebody's made spaghetti, I'm going to, you know, Mm -hmm. like you've taken the time out of your day to make that. So I'm not going to be like, am I eating that shit? You know what I mean? So like I'll have, I'll sit down and eat it. And Mm -hmm. uh, Kara figured out with me that the way you can tell if I'm really not into something is if I don't go back for seconds. If if I go back for seconds, I'm cool with it. I liked it. If Mm -hmm. if I eat the, like the one portion, I'm I'm good. Thank you. That was delicious. I Mm -hmm. appreciate it. (laughs) Um, But I, kind of what I was asking you, you know, earlier, cause like, what do you think, what do you think it was that, what do you think it is that kind of got you to the, to the point where instead of, you know, how you felt like, you know, different when you were, when you were younger, things like that, like what, what was it that got you to like embrace it? Or is there, is there certain ways that you, you know, it in, embrace it specifically or, you know, something like, you're talking about like my my yeah. foreignness. Yeah. Your foreignness. I just found people who appreciated me for who I am, and I just found a sense of security. And I mean, it's like I just I am who I am, and it's I've tried to kind of change it and be like please the people that I am around, but ultimately I just fall back on just how weird I am and just. I'm just a weird person. I am who I am, and I know that I am not for a lot of people. I have a lot of weird hobbies and tendencies, and just I'm a different kind of person, and I've just stopped trying to find people who don't um, who who don't enrich me. Mm-hmm. And I've just found it easy to find, like... 
I'll cling on to someone and then I have such a meaningful relationship with them that like your wife, Kara, I mean, I, in middle school, I wanted to be her friend so bad. She just seemed like the cool girl. And I remember finally being friends with her. Like we had a conversation we had, this is just a, a story in itself, but we had a very bonding conversation over masturbation. <laughs> and I remember thinking like, there are other girls thinking about this. There are other girls doing this and I'm not, it's not just me. And then I've met people through her because she's such an enriching person and I've made friends through her. And, you know, and it's like you finally find people, you open up about yourself and you find people who are more like you than anything else. And I've just kind of stuck with that. And I've figured out that there are people that are out there like me and now that I'm older, it's so much better to not just be like everybody else. And I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm not like this. Eh, there's no one else in the world like me, but, <laughs> but beautiful, but, yeah. but I don't know. There, there are other people out there that will appreciate me for who I am. And I have just figured out it's not worth me putting time in people who don't appreciate that. Yeah. I'm, I can definitely relate to that because I've all, you know, I'm very close with my family, mm -hmm. um, you know, even with them being, even with them being, you know, now we're like 10 hours apart cause they also mm -hmm. live in Michigan, but you know, we're, I still would consider us to be very close and we can talk about anything. But outside of that, I've always been someone that it's like, I only need, you know, four or five yeah. really solid people as far as like my friend group and, you know, with Kara's family, I consider them family as well, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, that's I think why I feel so uh hashtag blessed Hell to yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> to know you and, and Hayden because you know a big thing for me is you know when I when I moved down here I knew you know Kara's family and and you know her brother and cousin and stuff like that mm -hmm. and we were cool but it, you know it's leaving everything and being like you know I don't I really don't know anybody you mm -hmm. know what i mean like you know the way that i know people at home um and i remember the first time i don't know if you remember this but the first time i th i want to say the first time i met you in person I, I had heard all about you but the first time i met you in person it was uh christmas mm -hmm. and you were your parents were at their old house, not where they are now. Uh -huh. And you guys were having like Russian Christmas. Oh, hell yeah. And Kara was like, nuts. I'm going to go drop this Christmas gift off to Christina. Then I was like, okay, cool. And I want, and you were just like, you gave me the biggest hug. Oh, John. And I was just like, you know, cause like I've met other people and they're like, Hey, it's mm -hmm. nice to meet. And when you're just some guy that you don't know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, it's easy to kind of feel like, you know, are they judging me or things like that? And I've mm -hmm. never, never once felt like that with you it was just like you are that kind of person where you are so genuine that it can be felt and i guess i've never been on the other side of that Thanks, coin John. with you i've never been someone else. oh i can be a petty bitch. i mean I, I hope i'm not anybody who's ever like <laughs> you know, you've left somewhere you're like a fucking asshole but yeah i hope i've never gotten on that Squeeze side but, really <laughs> right so nice to meet you <laughs> um but i you know it's I think exactly what you said. It's, you know, not trying to, I think that's a lot of the reason that I've always been like that is because I like, I have no interest in trying to be something mm -hmm. for somebody. You know what I mean? Like it's just exhausting and it's just, it's so tiresome to be around people who don't fulfill you. And it's, I don't know. I feel like I'm just at the age where I just don't have the time for it. And I just cling on to the people who, really just are special and yeah, you know, the other people it's just like fuck them taken yeah they can do whatever they want well that's, i think that's why i'm so into that married at first sight show is because like <laughs> i try to like not have any real drama in my life other than what's you know you're in mm -hmm. you're in a, you're married you've got you know kids bills responsibilities there's going to be like a certain level of mm -hmm. like built-in adult drama but i like that show because i can just be like Oh, okay, this is what like this is what my life. <laughs> These would be are what if problems I was a Crazy are. person, right? Like <laughs> yeah. I'm not at the brink of just marrying somebody without ever meeting them. Oh, 
I could, yeah. I could talk about that show forever. That could be us. <laughs> I talk about that show so much. I, oh, my God. I love it. But also, I love living in a world where people can just do that. <laughs> I'm telling you. I love I, TLC. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you like the Thousand Pound Sisters, right? <laughs> I could so be a Thousand Pound Sister. That's <laughs> why I like it. We were talking before. I am like two traumas away from being a Thousand Pound Sister. Well, that's why I told you. I'm the I'm the guy that literally, if I didn't get like that one hug at the right time, I'd be eating three rolls of toilet yeah. paper a day. Yeah. Like, just, it would just, my, I, oh, my I God. I so relate. Yeah, I love that. There's a show for every like weird. Was the like uh, my 600 pound life or? Uh, it's me. Was that uh, uh, that? Oh, what was that show? That I was pregnant and didn't know it. You ever watch that one? Glad I know. I can't relate to that. That oh. is my worst nightmare. No, Dude, I love a- babies. I love kids. I love them so much. But to have something in your body for an entire gestation and you don't know about it no man i ate that burrito and it's just been bothering me real <laughs> bad for nine months for a long time and then you shit and there's a baby yeah, there's a there was a lady on there who literally she was like i just felt like i really had to go to the bathroom and she went in and Look, i hope that's dropped my the kid problem. in the toilet i really hope that's my situation i just hope that everything's easy peasy until i have to take a big shit and then all of a sudden i'm mom i'm pregnant every that's day my, <laughs> that's my dream honestly hashtag <laughs> hashtag blessed <laughs> if i could just poop this kid out <laughs> yeah you know you get pregnant nine months later you poop the baby out God. <laughs> <laughs> no uh yeah i mean i still think I'm still really pushing for uh, for pregnant at first sight. I still think that would be. I honestly would finance that. I would help finance oh that. God, I've if yeah, we were, get your GoFundMe going. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I well, listen, we that, could cast really well in uh, this part of town. Well, uh, isn't this? I could be way, and if it's on Wikipedia or something like that, I could be way off. But I believe Kara told me that like a huge percentage of contestants, or not contestants, but guests on the Jerry Springer show were like from the Middle Tennessee area. Wouldn't doubt it. So I mean, I'm sure there's the the talent pool. I'm telling you though, I, like <laughs> my talent <laughs> talent pool. for sure. Yeah, like my favorite would be like the the person that was coming back for like. It's their third time on the show. Hell it's, yeah. I'm Dakota. I was on season one, <laughs> season four. Season seven's my year, baby. We're going to have this baby. You Hell yeah, I mean? baby. We're going to do this. Like, oh my God. Yeah, they didn't want me, didn't want it. But season seven. <laughs> didn't want it. <laughs> That's season seven. I I'm telling you, this show, Married at First Sight is on like season 10. Like we could definitely I'd go seven finance seasons. I'd for sure. Oh, speaking of seven. So most, uh, I was... You know, when starting a show and stuff like that, I wanted to say a special thank you because most, I guess, most podcasts hmm. don't last seven episodes, and you are episode seven. That's a lucky number too. So we have, I we have broken the. That's the God's the seven, number. Yeah, we've broken the the seven episode stretch, <laughs> uh, and I just I'm glad that you're here to do that. Thanks, John. Oh no, it's my pleasure. Um, thank you for being here. I really appreciate Anytime. it. Um, so. I did want to talk to you because I like I can't end the show. I'm just checking to make sure we're still good. Okay, you're fine. Um, I cannot end the show um, without talking about one of my favorite things <laughs> that you do uh, <laughs> creatively. So uh, you are a uh, an artist in your. I, I, I definitely. I mean this. I mean this 110. percent And I I've been telling you. I want to say for years that like you're missing an opportunity to make some money or to, to kind of have your own brand out there. But you are an artist in (laughs) the most interesting way you make erotic collages, (laughs) which I do have some, I'm going to try to get one up on the screen. Um, got to make sure that it doesn't get pulled from YouTube. Um, I might, uh, either like set up an email or, uh, I just need to do a website. I'm just so okay. I will I'll help you with it. So I've kind of come to terms with what the problem is. One, I'm scared to get sued. <laughs> Two, I'm really scared to part with them. I put so much time and effort and conscious thought into 
all of them that I'm sad to give them away. But I know that like copyright laws won't let me sell prints. Now, so would, I will have to just give away originals. Now, let me ask you this: Would you would you feel that way if you were like commissioned? Right. Because if if someone came to you and was like, all right, Keita, like this is so mm-hmm. before I get into this, <laughs> let's let's kind of talk about because I want to break down like what. So I want you to explain to me what your art is, because I think it's best like coming from you. I can try to explain it, but I, I wanted to hear what you had to say. So. So I <clears throat> cultivate <laughs> art in the form of magazines um, through pornographic magazines, uh, food mo- magazines, and like natural and more or less like nature and architectural magazines. So I combine <laughs> all of them into one image, um, and they're all very different. I put just a stupid amount of thought and effort into them it's so time consuming to flip through every single magazine i mean i have i mean at this point i don't know how much all of them weigh i have so many magazines that i've bought and were donated to me that i've just flipped through so <coughs> well consciously i feel like i should let people listening know that you did come to my house today with a giant binder like a baseball card oh, yeah. binder of like cut out penises and yeah well i've been doing this okay so this, 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 you're like the dirty pokemon it's, lady that's <laughs> me <laughs> you go bitch yeah, you. so the it it started in the dumbest way uh we were in college and i think i was like a i was a sophomore in college and it was a few friends and i we got really drunk and just decided like I don't we didn't go to a party I think we just got drunk at someone's house and decided and we got drunk probably around early dinner like late lunch early dinner and when you are young like that you don't want to pass out immediately so we were drunk and still had energy and so we convinced a friend to drive us to like a porn store and I don't know why I wanted to buy some magazines but I did and I bought like a stack of porn magazines, gay and straight. And we came back to my apartment and just got even more drunk and just started co- to collage with the other magazines that I had. I had like Vogue and different fashion magazines, uh, like Bon Appetit magazines, and then these like, uh, like Buttman magazines and everything. And so we just decided to. I mean, it was just so fucking funny to me, like these vintage uh, porn magazines and you cut out with this. It's like this gorgeous like watermelon or salmon or just this beautiful plate of food. And then you put this really ugly dick on it. And it, <laughs> it's just so funny to me. And we just laughed and laughed. And I remember um, the Jimmy John's guy came in and we, it was probably, so we started around dinner time and we were just cutting and there's just dicks and tits and just all kinds of stuff laid out all over the floor. And we're just like cutting and pasting and just drinking and just being really stupid. And the Jimmy John's guy comes in to deliver a sandwich for my roommate who wasn't there Freaking yet. fast. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> And we're like, well, he's not here yet, but you can sit down inside. And so he's sitting on the edge of his of our couch and we're just cutting things out and laughing and everything. And this poor guy was just sitting there. And I was like, what kind of serial killer den did (laughs) I just stumble into? Like, this is the vibe that I need to pursue. So uh, for some reason, I just kept going with it and I kept buying magazines and kept doing it on my own. And I just it, it really came out of humor. I just think it's so outlandish and funny to me and just it really pushes the envelope and it's just the amount of like push the envelope that I like that's not like hurtful to someone. It's offensive, but it's not hurtful. And that's where my humor really is. And 
I've just kept doing it since my sophomore year of college. And that was probably like 2011 and it's 2020 now. So I've just been doing it for a really long you, time. You have quite a catalog. Like I've, yeah. like I've been, you know, to your, you've brought a lot of them here and I've been to your house and we like legitimately <laughs> like have them framed. Um, the only reason that they're not up here is just it's so dirty. You know, well, they're with having, you know, the kid now and uh, stuff like that. Like, Unfortunately, we got to make sure that we're keeping certain stuff. You don't want your baby growing up with that? Well, this is what I'll say, though. Like, because, okay, so you, I I have to say this because you say that, like, it's an extension of your sense of humor, and I totally see that. But I would also argue, like, like, you take it seriously. I really do. You take it seriously, and it is, like, it is artistic. Like, when you look at it, Mm -hmm. there is, like, definitely you know, contrast. And there's, you know, it's not just like when you, when I think when, you know, you hear the word collage, people just think of a bunch of stuff put together, Mm -hmm. but you are very meticulous about like, this is what I want. Yeah. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. Yeah. You look at, when I look at them, I don't look at them as like dirty pictures. They're like, they're compiled pieces of Mm -hmm. art. And I think that is definitely something that, as, as much as it may give you the the opportunity to kind of push like what you find funny and, and mm-hmm. like your your offensiveness, I don't want to take away from the fact that like they are legitimately like very artistic. Like, we Thanks, have, John. Oh, we, we, we have, the ones that we have up right now, they're in frames like they're you know what I mean, like <laughs> they, they were up on a shelf and like hung out for people. Anytime people come over, because <clears throat> I think uh, especially in it's funny because. You know, we meet, we've met people and kind of made new friends and and told them about them. And like, it's always something that we're like, okay, check it out. And like, it comes out, we're like, look, it's just, you know, some lady with her ass up and a chicken sandwich on her butt. You know what I mean? Like, it's just. And somehow it works. But for me, it's just so fucking funny. And that's, I don't know. Honestly, if it just boils down to a hobby, I, I still love it. I've been doing it for what, like eight years now? So this is what I say, even if you're not, even if you don't try to make any money off of it, Mm -hmm. you should definitely, definitely, definitely have a website where people can at least go like look at them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like watermark them. Yeah. I need to get them framed. It's just all of it is. So I've spent, (laughs) spent a stupid amount of money on these magazines just as is, but then to get them like matte boarded framed because if I'm going to do it, I want to do it and I want nice frames. I want nice matte boarding. I want nice glass. I want, I want the nice things. And then I just like, I get to a certain point where I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to do it. But then I'm like, do I really want to commit like $2,000 to framing all of these? Because this shit is so expensive. And I'm like, well, what if like, I'm going to spend all this money and they're just going to sit in my house. I don't know. I, I know I'm, I know there's gotta be some other weird asshole out there like me that would want one, but a hundred percent. I've told you that I could see (laughs) women in like all over the country having these on like a blanket and like, I see like weird girls and gay guys. That's my demographic. Or like, like a shower curtain like that could de- very easily some of the the ones that you've shown me could be a shower like i see it as like <laughs> decor or even if it was just like a big um you know you see them like uh all of like the very like spiritual hippie chicks always had them but they're the big <laughs> but with the dicks well you know like the big like <laughs> they hang in the back and it's always like some like spiral design or something like that but if it was like that and then a big pussy on your shower curtain yeah I, i'm telling you like <laughs> Is it, let me ask you this. Would you ever consider doing, because I know the framing and stuff like that gets really mm-hmm. expensive. Would you ever, because what, what, even if you like didn't want to sell them, because my thing is, I don't care if you want to sell them, anything like that. That's, I mean, it's your, your, your art, your work, you do what you want with mm-hmm. it. But I do 150% believe that there are people out there who are missing a serious joy in their life by not being able to see what you do. Thanks, John. No, I, I, I you've always been a supporter of this and I really appreciate it. Cause a lot of people are like, oh, it's, it's, but cool. it's, it, it, it's like you said, it, it is, you know, I could see why people would think it's offensive. Like mm-hmm. I've shown them to my mom, you know what I mean? Like, 
you know. My parents like them too. And yeah. I even asked them, like, would you ever hang this? And they're like, well, probably not in the living room, but yeah, we would support you. Yeah. Uh, they, like, I could definitely see why someone would think that they were offensive. But my big thing is, it's it you can be offensive as long as you're not hurting anyone you know what i mean like yeah, they're not, just offensive in nudity right and if know? it's not for you it's like it's like the you know it's if you don't want to see boobs in a movie like don't yeah. go see that movie you know what i mean or if you don't you know i'm just a very afraid with the like pc culture uh nowadays yeah, because but you're but I I I and I say this a hundred and in a hundred and fifty percent all like uh, like a hundred percent I mean this from <laughs> from my soul when I look at what you do with those I look at you as an artist I Thanks, don't look John. at you as someone is just like oh I'm just cutting stuff out but like mm. you are from start to finish and I get it like you know with using magazine clip outs you've got the copyright stuff but I, what i was thinking maybe an idea to kick around i think you could do like a digital gallery if you got a couple mm -hmm. couple like flat screens and just set up a like a, a gallery people could just come and see them for free yeah, i would love to be in an art show but i just don't know what art show would want me i don't know i feel like especially in tennessee i think you're gonna get <laughs> that's the thing though like i think if you were to do that here mm -hmm. Like you, you are setting yourself. If you were in Brooklyn or you know something like that, where there's all sorts of like, and I'm not saying that this is what what you do is, but you know there's all there's like the like this is my trendy art. You know what I mean? Like this is a a table that you can't sit on. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you know, like you can look at it, but that's the art. Like you want to sit there, but you can't sit on this on this seat. You know? <laughs> I think being here. You've got way more of mm -hmm. a like, hey guys, like whew, you ain't ever seen anything like this, and you're gonna <laughs> set yourself true. apart. I, I mean, I definitely listen. I will tell you this, and even if you never do it, I will tell you forever. Like you need to lean into it because thanks, John. You, I, 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 I know think, I need to. I know I do. I'm uh, just still hesitant. <laughs> oh no, I understand. I mean, it, well, and you know what I'll say too. Um, because I was kind of thinking about it before you, you came over today, but it, I'm sure that, you know, once you spend the time, right. And you're, you're, you're taking all the time and you're starting one from, cause mm -hmm. it's not like you're, you know, I'm sure you've got some kind of like, okay, I, like there's a, an inkling of like where you want it to go mm -hmm. or, you know, or maybe sometimes you're just like, I'm going to start with this and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But I know that, you know, making music, being in the band for as long as I was and like touring, it's like you, you work on something, you work on something. You're like, is it ready? Is this mm -hmm. something that if I put it out, are people going to receive it very well? Yeah. And I mean, that was just, you know, that was just with us writing songs and, and putting, I mean, I've got, I, I probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't be the one to talk because I've got a hard drive full of songs that I've written that like mm -hmm. no one has ever heard. Cause it's just like, well, oh. that's my problem is I have just I'm a big dreamer but just as far as executing what I want I have a like I'll have this great idea I have a really great imagination I have a great idea of what I want and I think about a big picture but then as far as actually committing to doing it that's where I have a hard time because like I love to paint but then I sit down and I, I start painting and then I get into my own head about well, this could be better, this, like, you know, and I, I hesitate and I doubt myself. And then I do that in all aspects of everything. Yeah, like, I love to cook. And then I think about, oh, this could be better. This could, I could do this. And then it translates very much into my collages where I'm just, I know there's, there are people out there that would appreciate it because I'm not one of a kind. They're weird people out there just like me. I've never seen anything like them. I and that's not like a that <laughs> no, but I like I mean that in the sense that like you what you're doing is unique. Not like I've never seen anything like it. That's great. Yeah. But like l like I've never seen anyone doing what you're doing. And I think that's the thing for me that I'm like, run with it because like mm -hmm. that is where you are the beautiful butterfly. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's you. like that's where you're like you're like, hey, I I'm I, I haven't 
I really do love what I do. It, it brings, if nothing else, it really brings me a lot of joy. And there are times where like, I'll just be home alone in my underwear with the dog running around and I'm just like collaging and I am crying, laughing at how just silly these things are and how somehow they've turned out to look so well. And it just does nothing but just bring me personally joy and if if somebody else can appreciate that that'll just mean everything well i think you kind of have a little bit of the the comedian's brain a little bit where it's like this is offensive (laughs) it's very offensive and sarcastic yeah it's it's because there's also like i mean like again i don't think you give yourself enough credit because there you can look at some of these pieces and there's very much a statement that's being made like you can True. point out you know when you're talking about like pc culture and stuff like that like mm-hmm. you can very you can point out that's like oh this is like this is this is a piece that's that's attempting to say something or is making it a specific mm-hmm. statement but you take you take these crude offensive things and you package them in a way where they are funny and they push the envelope but it's still art you mm-hmm. know what i mean and i think you know, especially knowing you, the the way that I do, and and some of the things that you're into, it very much reminds me of that like comedian kind of brain where it's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that's taboo, I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to like make it palatable, and and how can people kind of take it and and push the envelope with it a little mm-hmm. bit? And I think I don't know, maybe that's why I like it so much. But I just I I look at them and I'm like, man, there's like nobody doing this. Like nobody does anything like it. And I'm really going to try to find a way that uh, I can hopefully like at least get maybe like one of them up on the website or something like that. If people want to check it out uh, when the episode (laughs) comes out. But I don't know. I just uh, I mean, I I know I said this kind of at the beginning of the show, but I really you are one of the most wonderful people I've ever had the privilege to know. Um, having you, Hayden, your family and, and our family's life, uh, like I said, I don't know what living here would have been like without you guys, um, and, and having the relationship that we have. And I just want to say thank you for coming in and, and sharing. And, uh, I think, uh, a lot of people, I, I think when people listen to this, um, I, I feel like there is going to be people connecting with it. Um, that maybe in ways that they didn't expect and things like that. So I just wanted to say thank you for sharing and Thanks, just thank you for uh, for being in my life. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, not a problem. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you later.